talk to uh, another former player and a close friend and neighbor, my man, Dequell Jackson, played with him in Maryland, played for the played in the NFL for a long time for the Browns and the Colts, Pro Bowls, linebacker, also Athletes Unplugged podcast right now. You can listen to him there. But I don't know, like these, you and I have had these conversations. I, I often and it's a tough conversation to have with someone who doesn't fully understand it but what go what comes to your mind when you see what happened to Tua in the game on Thursday night it's a constant reminder when I saw Tua go down it reminded me of just how fortunate I was mm-hmm. uh, to play for 11 seasons to only be diagnosed with two concussions. And we can talk about the mm. the type of concussions I had in a second, but it just, it, it brought everything full perspective, you know, in terms of my family, my son, you know, he's a very energetic guy, a little boy, and he's really rough. He likes to tackle me and he knows that he played football and all those yeah. good things, but you know, it's scary. It, yeah. it, it was very, it, it very scary to know you play such a violent sport and I know every guy out there has a, he's playing for different reasons, yeah. right? And mostly because of what it can provide for you, right? right? But on another hand, I thought as far as the NFL and how they dealt with concussion protocols, that at the very least in this day and age, in today's game, that those protocols would be in place to protect the player from the player. And you, oh, sorry, go ahead. Go and last week seeing him stumble, mm. I knew right away because I had a friend to go through that. I knew right away he should not be back on that field, and to come back in a short week and to have this happen, uh, it, it's scary. It's frightening to say the least. Do you and um your wife Christina ever talk? Or like Ashley, I just um talked to Ashley about it, and I was wondering if how much you worry about yourself. And have you and Christina had any conversations? Because we didn't know. And you play linebacker. Like, there's a lot of mm-hmm. uh, head contact. And we don't know whether it's – or we do know that, like, the sub-concussive episodes, accumulation of yeah. going, playing football can lead to uh, CTE and long-term damage. Have you and, and Christina had any conversations about you? Because I know you – I mean – I know mm-hmm. you have concerns about it because we are friends and we have these conversations because right. I have similar concerns. So right. how, yeah, how often do you talk about it and, and what do you guys talk about? All, all the time. Life? I mean, it, it, so this year will be five years removed from the game and probably the first two years I really didn't talk about it with her. Mm-hmm. I was trying to figure out what the heck was going on. You know, the transition is different for everyone. So when I got through that phase and started, talking to a therapist, I was able to open up a lot to Christina about some of the things that I was dealing with. So we talk about it a lot. To answer mm-hmm. your question flat out, we talk about it a lot because I'm so hyper sensitive to it because yeah. now I have a lot of friends who have battled yeah. with mental issues. And there was there was an incident as far as less than a month ago. Yeah. You know, I remember I got that one. It. yeah. You know, yeah. and, and it, it's just become a reoccurring thing that's happening throughout the friends who are retired that you always talk about it. We always talk about it. And I've had some uh, rough spots some dark spots where yeah. I had to get help. I had to seek help because, I mean, you just get in a weird place and you don't know what's the cause of it. And at the very least, you don't want to burn your family from all the 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 what I signed up for. Yeah. No, that. that... It, it's it's scary but yeah the uh, a couple i guess it was about a month or a couple months ago um we both got contacted because a former mm-hmm. player was like going through some things and right was threatening violence on his family and whatever and like trying to figure out how to deal with that without calling the police because he's black and you don't want to send the police to the house but you also don't want to um do nothing but right fortunately me and you and we called some resources at the pa and like we were able to get the guy help and get to a place where everyone was safe and nothing that was scary man that was scary scary. people people who 
I don't know if the general population deal with the amount of trauma mm -hmm. and the amount of friends, a friend <laughs> circle or community of yeah. people that we have to deal with that's dealing with some sort of mental lapse or mental mm -hmm. things they don't know what they're going through. And if the significant others aren't educated enough or don't mm -hmm. know someone in the area like yourself or myself, you know, what do they do? So it, it, it goes far beyond what we watched last night, far beyond what we watch on Sundays and Monday nights. So this conversation is, is, is definitely one that doesn't go away amongst the football community. And it's something that I think the general uh, public really truly doesn't understand the, the depth of it. Yeah. That, um, the idea that, uh, <sighs> yeah. Um, when I hear about those stories and we hear about them far too often, I think the public knows about the big ones where there's a suicide, like mm -hmm. Sayal, Duerson, Waters, Javon Belcher, who right. shot his girlfriend and then shot himself, or Trey. even like Aaron Hernandez, who committed suicide right. in, in prison and he had CTE, or Chris Henry, who right. who fell off of the back of that car. And, and then they saw in his brain, he had CTE. They hear about those big ones. And then even me and you, like, a teammate, a former teammate, or just a, a another former player will, or their wife or somebody will reach out to us because they're going through something that's dramatic. Like no one calls for the small stuff, but I often think about like how, how many guys are going through something and like, and their families are going through it with them, but it's not big enough to get media attention or it's not big enough to call somebody. And it's like, it could still be bad. I, I told Ashley earlier, that like, I feel like I'm quicker to anger now than I ever was before. And like, it's not, it's not like, um, dangerous. Like I don't like scream at anybody in the house or hit anybody in the house, but like things that I know would not have upset me nearly as much yeah. upset me more now. And like, maybe that's normal or maybe it's something else and it's just mm -hmm. terrifying. So it, it, you, it, it, it really is we're, we're so hyper focused on our emotions you mm -hmm. know and any little thing is it a trigger is it a sign yeah. of anything so we have conversations all the time it's like hey hey you know like a check-in mm -hmm. hey you know like you know do you see if uh, do you feel like i'm not myself and mm -hmm. uh I'm, I'm not remembering things the way i did before you know i'm always asking these questions and i want her to be brutally honest with me Cause I don't want a situation to be, yeah. I don't want a situation, this situation to grow to the point where I don't see it myself, which in the case you probably, I probably won't. Yeah. It's hard to, right. Cause it's, it's hard to. So yeah, if your brain is, if your brain is acting up, your brain is not also going to recognize that your brain is acting up and right. they have to recognize it, which I, I think could cause for a whole bunch more tension trying to have, uh, because yeah, I don't know, nobody wants to hear that. And I think that's, it's important to have these conversations beforehand you know, like, and to to have, you have opened a good line with Christina, something that I think Ashley and I haven't done a good enough job of is like having these conversations because you can't just like all of a sudden out of nowhere, just be like, Hey, something, yeah. something wrong with you. <laughs> like, right. no, we need to have these conversations and address it. And I haven't gone to therapy and I, I need, I probably need to do that it's too. The it's the best thing. It, listen, to have a completely unbiased opinion yeah. um i thought i when when i decided to go this was before the pandemic i thought i was like man i'm kind of okay mm -hmm. but it won't hurt and then i i was like you know what let's talk and yeah. for me i wanted someone that understood my plight right yeah. so i wanted a a, a black figure or a, a, a black therapist because i wanted to dive deeper into you know dive deeper into my situation and I, I felt more comfortable with someone that understood that plight. So uh, it was the best thing. It, it really was. I got a lot accomplished and it brought more clarity and perspective to where I was in life. Mm -hmm. And come to find out the woman had a child that was beginning that process. He was an athlete mm -hmm. that were, was getting highly touted. So we helped each other in a sense. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it, you definitely, you definitely should do that. And we also yeah. need to go get our prostate. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We got time, right? What is it? I, I, I'm not 40 yet. What, it's 50, right? Well, I guess for, no, it don't hurt need, to get, we need to go. Sit, so from this, I turned 39 recently. So I told myself every birthday, I need to go get checked. 
right. prostate or something just to make sure right. everything else is, right. is well right. you trying to make me a better person i don't i don't know about <laughs> this you're trying to make me do too much i gotta go to therapy i gotta give him a prostate check i got no you do don't have to things. you don't you no, don't you're right to. i need I to <laughs> i need to all right brother i appreciate you um, we gotta get together this week, and I told you I, I bought a pickleball racket. So let's get out yes, there. And yes. See what's Are we finished? Or we, we we I can talk more about this, man. Let's, I let's, mean, what else more you gotta say? Like I, I honestly, I had only one goal uh, for okay. this um, episode was not to cry, and <laughs> I could feel myself getting close to thinking about all of this <laughs> no, stuff. Okay, so we'll, we'll I, change, I tried. I'll take over from this point. I'll take I, okay, over. Okay, give me give me what you got. So so uh, I, I can't help but think about you know when when you see moments like this or something you said earlier about most fans see the big collisions, the big stories, they hear about the bigger stories. And I heard you talking about it on your platform earlier today about the other guys, the offensive linemen, the defensive linemen, the running backs, the linebackers. There's a, there's a big, everyone on that field. I mean, we see that we make so much out of the quarterback and his situation because they're always talked about, but listen, you can't take the violence away from this sport and, that front seven, they are banging heads every single snap. Practice, uh, for months at a time, these guys are dealing with this. And they aren't big collisions, but they're multiple collisions just, just um, you know, all the time. So uh, I can't help but think about some of the guys who I've had to talk to who are dealing with things. A lot of them have been linebackers, mm -hmm. defensive guys. Mm -hmm. and it's just I don't know if that's a direct correlation there but you know that needs to be brought more attention needs to be talked about in terms of uh those guys but again you know we could talk about it to the sun the the you know the, the cows come home but you know it's, it, you can't take the violence out of the sport and unfortunately yeah. you know that's a part of it, and that's why we, we don't understand it. We love that's, it. The, that's the tough thing, or one of the toughest things, is we don't understand what leads to some guys having long-term issues and other guys not. You know, like there could be like um, preconditions that you have in your own like genetics that we don't know about, and it could be the repeated hits. It could like have something to, like we don't know enough about it, but the game is so popular and so interesting that like there's no time to stop and right. figure everything out and then right. keep playing like i think that's the scariest part about the risk that you're taking is you don't know how high the risk is you know mm -hmm. like there, there's i don't know there's plenty of I, i've been around old older retired football players who are fine and i'm like wow that's incredible plenty of them and i've also been around plenty of them that i'm like oh <laughs> that, <Yeah. laughs> that's terrifying and like it's like i said it's not always going to be a suicide or a, a mm -hmm. murder suicide or something like that like it can also just be miserable like <laughs> just yeah. miserable and like i i don't know i don't want to be that burden to anybody you don't want to be that burden to anybody and also i don't want to go through that like i <laughs> right i, I want to be yeah i want to keep living the way i'm living <laughs> I ask you, uh, can i ask you this last thing and then we can mm -hmm. wrap it up do you feel like you have do you do you feel like you intentionally are try to be more busy just yeah. to keep your head yep. stimulated so you don't yeah. fall into this dark all the time place? yeah all the time i think that's um, that's important at least again I, we don't know enough about it but like i feel happier when i have a purpose I feel happier when I have a reason to do something. I'm motivated even when I'm like, man, I don't feel like doing this. I got to stay up late and research this or write that, or I got to do another show, another podcast. I don't feel like doing it, but like the feeling that someone's relying on, you have some purpose, you wake up and you're like, man, yeah. I got to do this. Like right. that's more valuable to me. No doubt. No than, doubt than anything. I, I think keeping active, mentally at least even if it's like just like i gotta read this book i'm gonna finish this book by the end of this month mm -hmm. you know like those yeah. sorts of little goals you know like help a lot but anyway yeah. i appreciate That's you great. brother um you athletes unplugged y'all can go listen to my man um and i'm a bust your ass in pickleball <laughs> you let Not me know when
Not the <laughs> And my All knee right, feels bro. better, by the way. <laughs> I wasn't going to tell him about how you popped your knee when we was playing basketball. I don't even know what you did to it, but our old asses were trying to play basketball. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was embarrassing. It was embarrassing. Was I on defense or were you uh, on Yeah, defense? yeah, I think you was on defense. Yeah, and my my I yeah. hadn't moved that fast laterally yeah. in a very long time. And, you started uh, getting competitive. We was, we was messing around, yeah. and then yeah. you started getting intense, so... Let's, yeah, let's I played a win. light on pickleball. I played a win, and my knee was like, uh-uh, not today, buddy. Not uh, today. All right, brother. All right, brother. Appreciate it. Yeah.